How do you decide whether to evolve an existing line to meet new needs versus start a new line? What becomes the demarcation point for going one direction versus another? Technology evolves on these generational cycles, and it could be an ASIC technology evolving, it could be a optics technology or surdies and mechanical technologies, even things like cooling technologies. And at some point in time, you reach a point where it's less cost effective and there's less gains in evolving an existing technology and architecture versus clean sheet designing a new architecture starting from day zero and growing in that in that new technology node or, or type of technology. And so actually the 5500 was one of those breakpoints where we started with a very optimized set of silicon for a specific set of roles and functions in the network and evolved it to give us different characteristics than we had in other parts of our portfolio. Welcome to the Explainerds podcast. My name is Rob Boyd. Well, that was Kevin Wollenweber, VP of Product Management for Cisco's Mass Scale Infrastructure Group, which is a new name for that group. This was from the middle of our conversation, where I realized that the NCS 5700 is simply a new addition to the well-deployed NCS 5500 series. You see, there was a recent Cisco press release covering multiple service provider technology announcements, all centered on 5G mobile broadband preparation, which involves so much more than most consumers realize. But one line buried within this packed press release stated, Cisco is also introducing its new network convergence system, that's the NCS, 5700 router featuring four times higher performance with high density 400 giggy interfaces. Well, there was no further explanation and this one line alone actually led to more questions. 5700, that's a whole new number, which seems like a big deal for those of us who follow these things. Four times higher performance, but higher than what? High density 400 giggy interfaces. Okay, actually that one's pretty straightforward. Well, I ended up talking to a number of different experts within Cisco to dig into this. I mean, what is this? Is it significant? The quick answer is that the 5700 series is an important extension to the NCS 5500 series. It brings two new line cards for the modular chassis and, as we will dig into next, the engineering accomplishments were enough to signify that this is both a new family as much as an extension to the original, which is a good, if, well, not easy thing. So all NCS 5500 customers should pay close attention to what we cover here as it paints a bright future for the rapidly escalating demands hitting every network. And for those of you looking to start fresh, you won't be disappointed. So, the well-deployed 5500 is not being replaced by the 5700. It's being given a whole new life. I want to share the details that don't seem to be anywhere else, certainly not this press release, but as you can tell, to fully appreciate and understand decisions made around the new 5700, we need to revisit some of the 5500 journey. When we started thinking about or, or designing the NCS 5500 portfolio about six, seven years ago, really the focus was to build a different type of system. We had very large systems that were designed for our service provider infrastructure, um, but we were getting a lot of requests for a higher density, different level of efficiency, different cost structure of device. A lot of this was driven from the large web providers uh, and really focused on what they viewed to be a massive transition towards 100 gigi that was coming uh, over the next few years. So we stepped back and we looked at different technologies, different forwarding technologies, different look and feel of, of routing infrastructure, and we, we designed and built the NCS 5500 portfolio. And it was designed for that 100 gig E transition. Uh, you had 36 ports of 100 gig E per slot, which was way denser than anything else we had at the time. And it enabled us to get to a, a very different density, cost, and, and power efficiency because it was optimized really for that role that we were seeing emerge around 100 gig E aggregation. So we went from a, a small set of very high volume customers needing very high density 100 gig E to core peering aggregation and even down into the into the access layer. And, and what it did was it enabled us to grow a completely different part of, of our customer base that we didn't really have the right product fit for. Mm. Um, and so now we're at the point where we have over 42,000 chassis in, in production. We've shipped the equivalent of over a million 100 gig E ports. There's 
over 700 customers, and, and really the, the growth continues beyond just that in, initial customer base that we imagined. Wow. It's obviously found a home in many different deployments. Well, not surprisingly, the NCS 5500 has built quite the breadth of configuration options. 14 different fixed configuration systems, all ranging from 1 gig to 100 gig, plus three different modular systems. You got your 4, your 8, and your 16 slot and 11 types of line cards, each with a variety of port density and speed options. Quite an evolution beyond what may have initially seemed pretty straightforward. It was originally conceived as a data center uh, type of device. This is Mauricio Cruz, Director of Product Management for the NCS 5500. Over the last three years, by adding more features and really understanding the needs of the market, we've really put a lot of features that have made this platform extremely successful in uh, service provider aggregation. Which is found? Mobile backhaul, fixed uh, waterline aggregation, cable aggregation networks. And that's where, in the last 18 months, the NCS 5500 has had the biggest growth. It's been very successful in APJC and EMEAR as an aggregation box. High-speed Ethernet keeps moving closer to the customer. The 5500 has remained a champ for aggregation. So how does the NCS 5700 announcement fit into this story? You can think of this as a branding of this next generation of line cards and hardware that we are shipping and developing for the NCS 5500. All of these new ASICs that we'll be consuming from Broadcom, Jericho 2, Jericho 2C, and others that are in the pipeline, we wanted to create a differentiation from a naming perspective. So 5700 indicates a piece of hardware. It could be a line card or it could be a fixed configuration system that is powered by a Jericho 2 and above NPU. Okay, so tracking the MPU seems like a good way to differentiate here. So this means now five generations of Broadcom ASICs. You got the Qumran, Qumran MX, Jericho, Jericho Plus, and now with the 5700, Jericho 2. So to be clear, there are two new 400 gig e line cards now available that kick off this NCS 5700 inauguration. What kind of benefits can we expect here? First of all, capacity. There's an increased capacity of 2.7 going from the 5500 generation of hardware to the 57 generation of, of hardware. It offers high density, 400 gig, 200 gig, and 100 gig platforms. We've put tremendous care in adding flexibility in our ports to support a native 100 gig port or just by simply changing the optics type, support a 400 gig in the same port. Uh, capacity, density, and an interesting option here in the area of flexibility. TCO savings, uh, obviously by going to a lower process node with uh, 16 nanometers with Jericho 2, the cost per bit is, is evident. We're also offering investment protection. There's no need to rip and replace your system. It's a very simple upgrade in the modular systems. Uh, the fabric cards will allow any customer that still has open slots in their system to continue to use their existing install base. And then in the free open slots, populate them with the next generation 5700 line cards. Whether it's a 9.60 line card or 7.2T line card, they can coexist with everything that we've shipped up to this date. Well, how can such a major jump forward in capacity and density still be backwards compatible with the entire 5500 family? In the Broadcom family, one of the supporting features is what we call the compatibility mode. Vincent Ng is a technical marketing engineer for both platforms. Well, the chassis of different line card generations like Jericho Plus, Jericho, and Jericho 2, they have to communicate via the fabric. Jericho 2 ASIC, uh, if it's operate in this enhanced mode, it doesn't talk to the old generation. Broadcom actually have an SDK that allows this compatibility mode. They talk in the same language of the previous generation. All of the features that we've ever supported in our Jericho, Jericho Plus, in coexistence with our Jericho 2 hardware. So all your investment is protected, all your existing features, you know, are kind of looking very similar to before without going all native to Jericho 2 line cards. The, the key to this is software. Cisco worked very closely with Broadcom to help them develop software, which is the glue between our operating system, ISXR, versus their hardware, which is called the SDK, uh, the Software Development Kit. Uh, there are certain changes that have made it very easy to do some of the things in a more native way. So for a company like us that had developed a lot of unique features that were far ahead from our competitors, being able to support now both in the old generation 
and the new generation with a significant change in, in the middleware is no small feat. The NCS 5700 additions to the NCS 5500 are two 400 giggy line cards. High capacity with 9.6 or 7.2 terabits and major flexibility in deployment from the optics we will dig into further in just a moment to this extensive backwards compatibility, allowing that huge install base of existing 5500 customers to ease into these new capacities, however it makes sense to them. Now, there are a couple of changes that have to be made to the chassis. To interconnect the higher speed line cards, we need higher speed fabric. That's understandable. But there are additional requirements to that fabric. The fabric has to talk to the current generation as well. So for example, the Jerko and the Jerko Plus line card, they need to talk to the same fabric and then they can communicate with the Jerko to line card. So there's a new generation of fabric card that support all line card types. And the second upgrade? Most of the time, we want to maintain the chassis. We don't want to swap the chassis, but due to the increased uh, thermal requirement, we need better thermal capability. We are shipping a new option of fan for better heat dissipation to support the generation line card of Jerko 2. Okay, so two upgrades, fan and fabric, allow any existing 5500 chassis to support these new 400 gig line cards. Everything else stays the same, the route processor, shelf controller, even the power supplies. NPUs have an internal database for storing things like IPv4 and IPv6 prefixes, layer two VPN bridge domains, pseudo wires, or MPLS labels. For prior generation chips like Jericho Plus, well, these databases are fixed in size. So what's being done differently with these new Jericho 2 line cards? So instead of separate banks of different memory types fixed in size, they are now using a single pool of databases of all resources, right? And these resources are configurable to different amounts of different types. For example, for layer 3 optimized customers, they want more i 3 v prefixes. Then I can create a L3 profile for them with more LPM memories in there. So they allow them to store more IP prefixes. For customers who want more layer two services like pseudo-wire or bridge domain, then we can have the profile with more LEM, for example, right? They can store more pseudo-wires. So this allows a lot more flexibility in terms of customizing the same product, but to different customers with different service focus. That's the concept of modular database and profiles to fully utilize the modular database features. Let's dig into the optic side of this a bit deeper. So this is the first generation of line card to support 400 gig optics. So at FCS, we already support a wealth of optics of different reaches. For example, in the shortest cable, like direct attached cable, it's a few meters. We already support it. a 400 gig copper cable that support about three to five meters that you can plug on the within this very short range. And then on the medium reach, we support multi-mode optics. So like for example, 100 meters. And on the longer range side, the 400 gig DR4 optics can support up to 500 meters. So these three optics type that I mentioned, 400 gig DR4, 4 by 100 gig LR, and 4 by 100 gig LR, they are what we call a parallel optics. So it's using four fibers, multi-mode, to implement. The advantage of that kind of optics is that it can do what we call the breakout. The breakout. By leveraging an optics technology called QSFP DD56, we can actually take those same 400 gig ports and deploy them at 100 gig today. So there's another large customer base that we have that will put the, the 400 gig capable line cards in the network, deploy them today with 100 gig E, and then that migration from 100 gig to 400 gig is just replacing the optic and, and running the port at a higher speed. You can have your core router running 400 gig, and then it can be broken out to four interfaces, each is 100 gig, and then to talk to four other 100 gig switches. And then on even longer range, like two kilometers and 10 kilometers, we also support the 400 gig EVA 4 and 400 gig LR8. So you see a lot of options already available in 400 gig optics. Is success in this space limited to making things just smaller and faster? When we look at how networks are evolving, networks are scaling in very, very different ways. And so you think about more devices in the network, when you think about more complexity in the services that, that are being offered, there's really been a push over the last few years to simplify 
how our customers are going to run the network, really to lower their operational costs and, and, and the amount it costs them to run the network itself. And so we built simpler system architectures like what we have with the NCS 5500 and 5700. But we're also focused on simpler network architectures and protocols. And so when we think about things like segment routing and eVPN, what we're really doing is building out protocols that enable us to remove a lot of the complexity that we've built up and technology debt that we've built up in the network over the last decade or decades. So rather than having to have you know, multiple protocol stacks and stitch one protocol into another protocol, moving everything into the world of eVPN allows us to use a simple and common BGP control plane from end to end across the network. How have hardware choices been affected by this desire to support simplification? EVPN, for example. In the current generation of Jericho Plus chip, it supports two levels of uh, recursive lookup. Sometimes if you want to run, to run services on top of EVPN, that time you might want another level of recursion. That currently is a little bit tricky in implementing because the chip itself only have two levels of recursion. With Jericho 2, it is enhanced to three levels of recursive lookup. So with that enhancement, some of the features will be implemented natively instead of what we call using a collapsed approach where we collapse three levels into two levels. So it gives you a much better um, performance and easiness to implement certain features. That would benefit EVPN and some other folding as well. What about segment routing? You can think of SRV6, segment routing uh, version 6, as what IP and PLS was 20 years ago to the networks that were built back then, you know, to your ATM, your frame relay, switched networks. I see no reason why people not using segment routing because what embers can do today, basically segment routing can do it, and it does it better because it's a lot of simplification in the label stack. One of the key criteria in design of the protocol is simplification. It has the ability to do a better job of summarization of uh, route information. And that may sound like a very trivial thing, but it has uh, far reaching implications. It has impact in how the, the ASICs are built. Uh, how much memory is required, uh, how much processing is required, how network deployment could be simplified. So simplification is the key. New generation of Jericho 2 ASIC, it can support a much larger label stack in one cycle without the need for recirculation. So it greatly enhance the performance of segment routing. And in that terms, also segment routing V6, SR V6, they have the same generic requirement of more labels sometimes in some scenarios. So both technology will benefit from the hardware capability of the Jericho 2 ASIC in supporting a larger label stack. Cisco has made a lot of investments in putting SRB6 capability into this merchant silicon years before others could even attempt. And that it's because of our head start in working with merchant silicon, but also our strong lineage of service provider routing development. If we want to automate the network, the easiest way to automate the network is to actually have the network be simple and consistent across. So you move to simpler protocols, you flatten out that, that hierarchy of, of protocols in the network, and it actually makes the network then easier to deploy services on and easier to automate. There does not seem to be any question around whether service providers will be moving to 400 gig. With Cisco forecasting 30 billion connected devices by 2023, we can all feel this giant wave of network traffic, uh, increasing momentum driven by 5G preparation efforts happening around the world. So how do you envision these 400 gig upgrades taking place? Majority of our customers that have the modular 5500 systems will just upgrade those systems to be 5700 series capable and they'll leverage their existing cards along with these higher density 100 gig and 400 gig cards. Over time, we'll develop an even broader portfolio of these 5700 series cards, uh, so we'll have direct evolution uh, line cards in the, in the 5700 series family for everything that we have today with the 5500. Uh, but really where, where customers will get the biggest benefit from the 5700 series cards is you can build out at up to 9.6 terabits per slot in their existing systems. Um, you can put 24 ports of, of 400 gig E and go to very, very high density 400 gig infrastructure. So it's been a journey where Cisco has adapted, uh, created more value within existing systems. And now, of course, this continues with the 5700. 
although we started the the 5500 series really focused on um, what we called 100 gig aggregation what we very quickly realized is the chipsets had a lot more capabilities that we could leverage uh, and they were also flexible in that we could add different memories and different things like TCAMs and actually scale them up to do things that we didn't think the devices could do five years ago when, when we started these developments. So where we started with simpler core roles, um, what we call label switch routers or LSRs, which generally sit in the, in the core of the network and, and uh, in an MPLS network and, and swap labels and don't have a heavy level of functionality, what we realized is we could actually scale these devices pretty significantly from those levels by adding some of these auxiliary TCAMs and memories um, and put these into, into peering or even into, into lightweight edge. And then as the chipsets have evolved, they've also become more functional. So with this latest set of chips, the, the Jericho 2 chipset, we actually have a, a very scalable, very functional device that can move into even more of those kind of edge focused roles or, or light edge focused roles, uh, enabling us very high densities uh, but with power efficiencies much more like the, the 5500 series we've been deploying for the last five years. All right, well, two new line cards available today, the 18 by 400 gig and 24 by 400 gig, plus the increasingly popular flexible consumption model, FCM, which allows customers to avoid paying for ports they haven't activated yet. Really what we're launching and what we're delivering now with the 5700 is taking those technologies and, and taking that momentum that we have in the market and moving it into the next generation of, of density and efficiency. So taking devices that were tens of terabits and, and enabling us to build a device that's 153 terabits uh, in, in a half a rack. These aren't capacities we could even dream of you know, even five years ago. Uh, and it's enabling our customers to think about how they build the network in, in a very different way with a, with a different set of technology components and building blocks. All right, I want to thank Fred Trait, as well as my guests, Kevin Wellenweber, Mauricio Cruz, and Vincent Ng. Certainly appreciate your time and all of the education that you have given us. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. You have been listening to the Explainerds podcast. My name is Rob Boyd. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah,